Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Justin Melson with Happy Fox Productions and today we're going to be talking about what is the best editing software for filmmakers or video creators or people who do video in general these days, which is basically everyone. So, and before we go in and get started, I just want to say as a disclaimer, this isn't going to be one of those videos that's like, oh, you want to use this video over this video editing software or what I, what I, what I, whatever. I mean, it's huge it's really it's up to personal preference and somebody might edit on windows movie maker while someone edits on sony vegas or pinnacle studio or avid uh media composer whatever it, everybody has different preferences and so there's no right or wrong editing software here unless it's final cut pro you don't want to use that no i'm just kidding just kidding. <laughs> just kidding but um yeah there's no right or wrong editing software it's just everybody has different preferences and before we get started i just want to say there's no sponsorships going on i'm not being paid or endorsed by a company to say anything good or bad about either software so with that said let's go ahead and get started so the first one that we have here is premiere pro in fact you know what before i even go into this let's start off with what everyone does we can all admit here that everybody does this Everybody's Googled this before. What is the best editing software? And then they go and they do, you know, they do your research. And look, there's a lot. You know, there's Adobe Premiere Pro, there's Pinnacle Studio. This is kind of an old list, to be honest. I haven't used all these. I used Pinnacle Studio for a while. I used Premiere Pro for a while. And of course, there's Final Cut Pro and Sony Vegas. But look, there's even editing software or NLEs that you can call them that's not even on this list, like uh, Avid. Avid is the most popular editing software to date or you could say the most professional industry standard editing software out there. Well, that's kind of debatable now, but, and that's not even on this list. So you cannot necessarily go off of a Google search, like what's the best editing software? And then you could just pick, oh, well, this is the front of the list. So you'll just use this. It doesn't work that way. Everybody has different reasons for using different software. So with that said, let's go on ahead and jump into the first one, Adobe Premiere Pro. And so this is good because like any professional software, it's gonna cost money. Premiere Pro, depending on your plan. So what they did is they they uh, transitioned from having you purchase individual software, which was decently expensive, to a payment plan with Creative Cloud once they transitioned to Creative Cloud. So essentially, if you're a student, I think it's like $20 a month. If you're not a student or whatever your licensing plan is, or it's like $50 a month. Or if you go to NAB and get a discount or whatever, you might pay $30 a month. But you're paying between $20 to $50 a month for Premiere Pro. And that includes... A whole bunch of additional software so you get Adobe After Effects, Premiere Pro, um, Audition, Photoshop if I didn't say that already and a whole lot of good stuff and that's great because you're getting like I said with After Effects you could easily right click something and uh, dynamic link into After Effects you're getting all of that software for $50 a month which is a really 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 good deal um, Adobe did a really good job with that I mean because to be honest, a lot of people torrent or pirate software and everything. And that's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of money that they would be losing. But with this, it's way more easier for someone to say, okay, well, I could afford $20 a month. So if you're on the edge about, hey, what should I get? You're paying between $30 to $50 a month for pro grade editing software. And the user interface is very easy. So you have your assembly, you have your editing, your color, your effects. And within color, you even have your Lumetri color panel and everything. In case you guys are curious, this is a project for a Superman tutorial that's going to be coming out soon. And you can see the guy fly up here. But um, that'll be an effect that comes out in about a week. But as you can see, you have your scopes, you have your vector scope, your RGB parade, your histogram. Everything is already included in this software, and it's very easy to use. You have all of your bins, your folders, media management. It's very easy. You can just right click and you can edit something in Adobe Audition and that's another pro grade edit, uh, sound editing software or DAW, digital, uh, digital audio workstation if you want to call it that. And it's very great and you can go into your sequence, change your sequence settings very easily. So this is a very easy software to get used to and it's very flexible and it's almost like, <laughs> like three to four softwares in one because you can go from here to Adobe Media Encoder to After Effects to Audition to wherever and dynamic link all of it back into here. And there was a time where you could go up here and go into Adobe Speed Grade, but unfortunately they, <laughs> they took that option away, which kind of broke my heart. Anyways, let's move on. So next on the list is Sony Vegas. And this is my first editing software that I ever used. And I still highly recommend this. And a lot of professionals use this. Like I, I know um 
Luke Newman from Newman Films was using this software for a while. I don't know if they transitioned also. And the reason I transitioned from this to Premiere Pro is because this wasn't Mac based at the time, or at least I, it, it wasn't back then. I don't know if it is now, but see, I only had a Mac laptop on me. We had to go compete. And I'm like, oh no, I gotta, I have to uh, figure out a way to edit on a Mac laptop. And I only knew how to use Sony Vegas. So I downloaded Premiere Pro and it took me three hours to get all the knowledge and skill set of six years of using this software to put it in here. So besides the keyboard shortcuts, like for example, in here you would hit S for split and here you would hit C for cut. Aside from that, it's very easy to use. And I really like the way they have the bin set up so you could just go in, drop everything. And it's very great. You have all obviously your preview windows. Your rendering is very self-explanatory. Uh, let's see. So if you oh I can't render right now. I don't have anything in there. Let's put something in there. Let's go to video effects, media generators. Let's just drop something in. Solid color. Do black. Great. And so we have that. And the cool thing is you can apply effects to your entire timeline or for each clip. So for example, if we wanted to color correct just this shot, you could go here and then you could go, okay, let's add a color curves and gray. Let's say you just want to make this like warmer, take the blue out. Well, that's not really doing anything because it's black and white, but you get the point. You could apply an effect there, or you could go here to the actual timeline and apply an effect to the entire timeline. So let's look at something like radial blur. And if you add it to the whole timeline, that's great. And it does it to this shot too, which you just can't see because it's just a black layer. But it's the same thing with audio. If you were to have audio, you could add reverb to the entire track. You could EQ and compress the entire track, or you could do it uh, clip by clip, which I don't know if you could do that in Premiere. At least if you can, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I think it's not available in Premiere only because you could easily <laughs> take the entire project into Adobe Audition. And you know why do all that in Premiere when they have another software? That you can do that for so again sony vegas is great and then you can easily go and render your footage and again it gives you multiple codecs you get your h264 your i mean if you're gonna go old school wmv your xd cam broadcast codecs and formats everything that you would need and the render time is fairly quick and it does do i think it believe i believe it does cuda acceleration and it uses your gpu also for rendering and another software that we have, you guys ready for this one? We have Windows Movie Maker. Now, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure none of you guys in here are seriously thinking of using this because you can get it for free and it's the simplest of the simplest. Um, but you know, if you're going for something for free, use Windows Movie Maker. It's a great tool and I use this for years too. I even did two paid jobs using this software, believe it or not. I didn't tell them I was using Windows Movie Maker, but you know, I got paid and hired. I got hired and paid on two gigs that I edited using Windows Movie Maker. Hopefully whoever hired me doesn't know that I just said that. But now we can go back here. And of course, there's Pinnacle Studio. That's another great editing software. Uh, would I recommend it? Uh, after using it for a year, there are better software out there. But the way I think about it is like this. If you're going to spend money, you might as well spend money on something that's going to be an investment and it will last you a long time. And I mean, that sounds like I'm talking from a materialistic point of view, like a car, like, oh, you know, buy a car that lasts a while, you know, buy editing software that'll last a while. It's not like it's going to rot away or, or spoil or something. But in a nutshell, it's like, hey, if you're going to spend 50 to $30 a month, you might as well get Premiere Pro or some sort of Adobe Creative Cloud suite that will last you a while. Or if you're going to get Final Cut Pro, um, I, I've only used that for a little bit. And ever since they went to X, in my opinion, it it they kind of fell apart in my in my personal opinion but other people might disagree but and i haven't even used any of these i wouldn't even yeah i can't talk about those but then there's avid so you have uh practically most hollywood uh major tv productions or tv productions or hollywood productions usually they're edited with avid media composer this is basically the standard go-to editing software for professional editors like for example the hobbit but the reason that this isn't out there for consumers or they don't market this for consumers is because there's a whole nother process that comes into editing with this and i haven't even personally edited with an avid before but um from what i know there's a lot of work and transcoding and organizing that goes into your project before you could even start doing your cut and with premiere pro for example this is ProRes 422 Blackmagic footage, but I could easily implement that into the timeline with 
H.264 or uh, AVC HD or DNX HD, whatever other camera codec that I have, I could easily put that in there and just start going. But if you're editing on a software like Avid, you might have to do some other uh, transcoding to get it all and organize it all. But this is the industry standard uh, editing software. But now people are slowly moving more into Premiere Pro also. Like you have, what was that one movie? What was that one movie with the superhero? who was Ryan Reynolds, um, Deadpool, like was edited in, in Premiere Pro, Gone Girl edited in Premiere Pro. So, you know, big Hollywood blockbuster movies are, you know, moving towards Premiere Pro also, which is really great to see. But to be honest, Avid is the industry standard. And if you were to go to a client or a post-production house saying, you know, Avid, there's a good chance you would get hired over saying, you know, Sony Vegas. Not that Sony Vegas is a bad software, but it's not that often where you see major productions edited on the software. Not that you can't, it's just not common. Whereas it's more common to see major Hollywood productions and TV productions edited in this software, but it's not as popular a choice because there is a lot more rigorous uh, work that goes into it. And it's very, it's a very laborious process when you have to edit off of Avid. And again, <laughs> this is coming from someone who's never even touched the software before, but I'm just going off of people that I know who have used it. They say it's, it's much more laborious than Sony Vegas or Premiere Pro. So what is the final verdict? Like I said in the beginning of the video, I cannot tell you what is the best for you, only you would know. If you're someone who isn't planning on making money from this or you just wanna buy some software that you could use for basic editing and you don't wanna spend a fortune or let's say you just wanna edit daily vlogs, maybe you don't want Premiere Pro. You could easily, they have uh, various versions of Sony Vegas that range from 100 to $500 maybe. They have various different versions of Sony Vegas Pro and Platinum Movie Studio that are very, very basic and the user interface is just the same and it's very easy to use. Or if you're someone who's trying to become a, prof a professional or you want to start making money or you need to have a fast and efficient workflow, not even with the user interface, but just the way the software handles uh, CUDA cores or your processor. Like if you have a quad core or a eight core processor with hyper threading, or if you have you know, uh, just, I don't know, or in a really nice graphics card, a lot of the lower end software won't even look at that stuff because they're just not engineered and programmed that way. But if you're editing off of Premiere Pro, you know, they have innovative people and engineers that I personally got to meet in person and they're really nice people and they're constantly pushing the limits on what is the best way to get this stuff to render faster. Hence why you're able to, at least in my case, I can edit like 12 bit raw footage in real time, which is crazy because years ago and on, you know, other software, I couldn't even think about doing that. I'd have trouble loading my DSLR T2i footage. So again, in my personal opinion, I personally use Premiere Pro. That doesn't mean it's the best, but that just means for me. And if you guys have seen any of my videos, that's what I use. And I used Sony Vegas before that. And the transition literally took hours. It took three hours to transition from Sony Vegas to Premiere Pro. And then before that, I used Pinnacle Studio. I wouldn't, I, you know, I, that didn't really stick with me too long. So I couldn't talk much about that. And then before that was Windows Movie Maker for me, but everybody's different. And I hope this video uh, gave you guys some information and enlightened you guys on which software would be best for you. My name is Justin Nelson with Happy Fox Productions. And if you liked this video, please feel free to subscribe or leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.